Hey, John, how are you? What screening were you at? Uh, I saw Mafia Mama today. Oh, yeah, how was that? Uh, it's good. I mean, I was like, oh, this will be great for my Italian family. They'll really love just seeing Tony Collette be bad at being a mafia boss. Um, <laughs> so, but it, it's apt that I went and saw that before this movie, which uh, had, it was littered with Godfather references. And then I came out to talk about a Scott Gann movie. So uh, <laughs> it was real, real perfect. <laughs> but uh, with the movie, like uh, One Day as a Lion, you are working both with the writer as an actor and you're kind of like putting your own vision on it. And it, I do love how this movie looks. I think it is so beautifully shot and uh, the, like your, the framing that you use for a lot of this movie just is like really interesting and cool in a way like I didn't expect uh, this movie to be. And so in working with Scott and kind of bringing this vision to life, how did you guys kind of navigate the he wrote it and is starring in it, but you're behind the lens directing him. Yeah, um, that's a good question. I, uh, you know, what when we started talking about making the movie together, um, you know, we we had a lot of discussions about that specifically, like where is you know where do responsibilities begin and end for each of us? Um, and you know, to Scott's credit, he was, uh, you know, he said, you know, once once you decide to do it, it's your movie, and 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 I'll follow your lead, and and you know, he did he did as he said he would. And, uh, you know, for me, because I didn't write it, um, it kind of allowed my brain to kind of nerd out on other things, um, specifically the composition and the framing, which I really had a lot of fun with and take a lot of pride in because I think the movie, you know, it looks really, really pretty mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, has a really strong visual look to it. So I'm happy with how that turned out. Yeah, it definitely looks like, you know, those like Instagram accounts where they'll be like one shot like it's I was like I, I was like oh I can see like 20 shots from this movie just like on the one shot Instagram pages because it's just so pretty when you're looking at like the full composition that it it's just like it was fascinating to kind of watch with each new scene like I love that diner scene and how you shot them sitting in the table versus uh her being like in the back corner talking to them and like off camera like I loved all of it it kind of worked really well with this story, which is like a bit out there, but as a whole, when you get to the end works really well. And so when you are working with like so many moving parts, like you're slowly learning about uh, Taryn's character and you're learning about their kid that like, he's like, he's in juvie. And for some reason I thought he was like a child child. And then he'd reveal he's 15. And I was like, oh, that's like a teenager. It's not like an eight year old in juvie. But how do you kind of like, break down uh the filming of those parts since it is kind of a slow reveal throughout the movie as we're learning more and more about these characters um that's a good question uh it's for me i mean having written a bunch of scripts my brain i think naturally just kind of learns how to pick those moments out and learn mm -hmm. how to you know it's like you know in a in a film like this you're especially with Scott's script, you're kind of talking around everything and you're kind of, there's a lot of dialogue in each scene. Um, and not all of it serves the story. A lot of it is uh, just people talking, which is, which mm -hmm. is a stylistic thing that, that Scott writes well. Um, but when you do that, it's important that the story continues to move forward and uh, that things don't lag. So, you know, for me and the way I approached it, you know, I, I tried to, through music, through composition, um, and things like that, I tried to make sure that this the the inertia of the movie matched the the way these characters rhythmically were speaking due to the dialogue. So, um, so yeah, I don't know if that answers your question or not, but uh, yeah, no, for sure does. Uh, to piggyback off that, because I'm always fascinated by music in movies, because like when I write things, I write to music, which I know you're not supposed to do, because you might, you might not get that, the rights to that song, but it just helps kind of frame things in my mind. Right. For you, is that like is music something you kind of turn to to help you when you're like visually creating something or when you're writing something, or is it something that comes as an afterthought? Um, usually as an afterthought, I try not to think about it because of the things you're talking about where, mm -hmm. 
you know, if you, I mean, I have written things successfully for music and past films where I'm like, I know there's going to be a cue here. And, you know, a lot of the times I've learned that, you know, it's, it's good to have a placeholder cue. And, and especially for somebody who's reading a script, you know, I might put in the script that there's, you know, it's a Rolling Stones song, knowing full well, I'm never going to get that, but I'm just trying to convey to whoever's reading it, the tone, mm -hmm. because they're obviously going to be familiar with whatever song, you know, the Rolling Stones it is. Um, but it's good to convey tone with music uh, when you're writing, uh, you know, you might be very specific, even though you know, you're not going to get it. But uh, when I approach things, I try and refrain from that as much as possible, because I don't want to limit whatever it is you know um because if you rely too much on music then you you know you can and it doesn't work out then you're really screwed you know uh, yeah. so approaching it without music first music will always enhance something so uh it's best to get it right without it and then add to it if you need to yeah and i like what i love about this is i think it's like if maybe it's because of his father but like I consider the uh, Kern family to be honorary Italians just and like the tone of this movie does feel very much like my family all trying to talk at one time because it's it's all quick everyone's kind of talking over each other at times and you're like how's anyone listening to what someone else says but then the person will be like well he just told me this 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 and this and like they they hear all of it and this kind of has that that feeling at times when like so much is happening and you can like it'll cut to a character and they're like, oh, they've recognized everything that went on in the scene and they know exactly what happened. And so with that, like that chaos, but like also making it very clear, like, yes, here's what you kind of need to remember that just happened. How do you approach stuff like that as a director? Do you kind of have like the, all right, like, yeah, every, there's a lot going on, but this one thing needs to be heard. So then we all know that's what's important. Yeah, I mean, I, I've... Uh learned and developed i guess a way of breaking down a script um for me where I, I you know it's very important like you said you know every scene you know every scene should have a motivation so you know whatever the scene is sorry my dogs hey come here sorry come normally here. i have a cat who decides yeah. he's just gonna sit in front of my computer screen when i'm doing interviews and i'm just like thanks <laughs> Um, but anyway, so I go through and, you know, whenever I'm breaking down a script, every scene I look at, and I say, okay, what is the intention of this scene? What is, what are we trying to get to, um, from the beginning to the end? And from there, then you kind of go through and, and break down the dialogue or the actions of the scene and figure out exactly what key moments achieve that intention or execute that intention. And so once you kind of do that, you can look at it and be like, okay, well, the, this is no matter where we're at and how we get there. I know I need to to cover these. And then based on how I've covered other scenes, um, you know, maybe there's motifs you've established by how you're going to, you know, reveal things or show things like you're saying, where if people are just constantly talking over to each other and then you cut to a character and it's just his eyes are just moving back and forth and it's a static shot, then you've kind of set up a, a style for how you're going to cover and reveal certain plot points. Um, I don't know that we necessarily did that here, but I guess to answer your question, um, you know, I break things down and and how what the intention of the scene is the focus of of said scene and how you cover that is uh, you know, your signature as a filmmaker. I feel like so. Yeah, and I like what I meant was like by the end of the movie, there were things that I like had picked up throughout the movie that I didn't realize I picked up, which I was like, oh yeah, that's my training of listening to my family all talk, and then at the end of something, be like, oh well, like two hours ago. So and so told said this to this person, and like I realized by the end of this movie, I had kind of done that just naturally with what was going on, um, mm -hmm. and it's really cool to kind of see it all wrap up in that last shot. I think it's really, or like the last little sequence there. I think is really cool. Uh, thank you for talking with me today. I I really liked this movie a lot. I was shocked by the end. I was like, oh, this is this is really good. Not that I had doubts, but like I was like, oh, the ending of this like tied it together so beautifully with a little bow that I loved it a lot thank you Rachel I appreciate it thanks for talking to me and you, you had really good questions and that's uh <laughs> that's rare I will say so <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> have a great thank one you. thank you too